people. So in terms of the challenges that we're facing right now and the portal or the doorway or the movement into the next cycle that we are experiencing, it has everything to do with balancing and cultivating a greater relationship with ourselves. And ultimately, yes, it is a victory, but it does feel like a bloody battle, doesn't it? It, do, it literally does feel like we're fighting for, we're fighting for ourselves. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your day. Yes, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also keep in mind that this is a timeless reading. Yes, so whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. In any given situation, I highly recommend that you as always, pay more attention to the title of the reading, whether you're on my channel or someone else's channel, because that's going to give you an idea of what or whether or not the reading will resonate for you. Yes. So happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are all doing well. I am going to do happy hour tonight. It feels better to have happy hour on a Tuesday because um, Wednesdays and Thursdays and the, at the later, later and the latter end of the week, half of the week tends to be time for friends. So I want to make time for that. So, um, yeah, we're doing happy hour tonight. Yes. So for those of you on Patreon, look out for your extra 15% off code for happy hour. If you would like to get in on happy hour, the floor is officially open. Uh, happy hour is the session in which I go live here on YouTube and I do single question readings for a discounted price. So for happy hour, if you would like to get a question, uh, a get on the list, you can find the information in the description box below. Uh, you can send $25 to paypal.me slash divine conversations. Make sure to put your question in the notes section of your payment so that I have the question ready to go for when it's your turn. And I only do 10 sessions or I'm sorry, 10 readings per session. So uh, the floor is officially open. So if you want to make sure that you're in on the list on the floor, well, okay. If you want to make sure you're on the list, then go ahead and get your payment in as soon as possible. Yes. Um, I don't have anything else to say. So with that said, let's get into today's session and see what we've got. Here we go. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, circumstances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, I, I do remember, I forgot to say, so we're gonna keep continue. We're continuing with the vice versa deck today. Yeah, or at least for this week. We may go longer than just this week, but we, let's just go, let's just take it one week at a time, yeah? I mean, we really should be taking it one day at a time, but you know what, that's fine. And then we're getting our clarity from the Los Carabello deck. And uh, as always, we will cross the Oracle Guidance Bridge when we get there, yeah? All right, guys, let's get into this here. I'm gonna give this five shuffles and we'll see what we've got for today. One. For the collective, what's going on? What do we wanna talk about in the collective today? This is two. What messages do we have for the collective today? Holy Spirit, this is three. Four. All right, last shuffle. 
this is five. Um, I'm seeing a lot of purple, a lot of yellow, and a lot of orange. Oop, and a lot of orange today. So purple to me is representing the higher wisdom, is representing representing the, the the higher knowledge, the collective knowledge, the collective message that's coming through. I feel like this could have something to do with your sacral chakra and your solar plexus chakra, which would be your emotions, your energy body, which is your sacral chakra, and your willpower, your drive, and your physical power, your soul, solar plexus. Um, from what I'm getting so far, it feels like there is a higher understanding. Um, some of you may be coming to terms, you may be gaining some emotional awareness right now. You may have some, you may be gaining some insights onto things that you may have been feeling lately, or you may, this also with this purple energy, and we're talking purple and orange right now. The purple energy with the orange to me is kind of is speaking to emotional intelligence and emotional awareness. There also could be an energy for either for today or for whenever this reading resonates for you in which you are really focusing on feeling better, really focusing on feeling happy, doing a lot of or, or paying a lot of conscious attention to what you're feeling and what that may represent for you. There's also an energy of just trying to feel better, trying to feel good, trying to communicate with the divine, communicate with your higher self, uh, God source creator, your angels, your ancestors, your spirit guides, um, maybe even, um, I'm feeling grandparents uh, or, or maybe someone that may have a passed on loved one, loved one. Yes, someone that may have really uh, held a lot of emotional comforting value to you that you may be trying to connect with or reconnect with. I did just hear that reconnect with right now in order to help yourself get back to a familiar place where you can feel good again uh, or at least just feel better at this moment. And then in terms of your solar plexus, The yellow energy that I was seeing. Um, in some cases, this is feel like this is feeling like um, re-identifying how it is you want to show up or what it, show up in the world or what it is you want to do in the world, where you want to put your willpower, where you want to put your drive, your attention, and your energy. I know I'm very much in that in, in a lot of this same energy myself. Um, yesterday, I spent the day. I tried to do some readings. Um, I'm, I, I wanted to get started on the monthly readings for May. Um, I did the Taurus reading, but I really couldn't. And it's funny because in the tropical system, I'm a Taurus. And that reading really kind of resonated with me. And so at that moment, I had to like take my own advice and say, all right, Eric, it's time to step back for a second. And so yesterday, I spent the day really working on cultivating the relationship with myself, a better relationship with myself. And that means listening to myself more and doing the things that I feel guided to do that I want to do rather than just doing what I know I was responsible for or the work I needed to do and all that kind of stuff. And that directly relates to my willpower and this could help you guys as well. This could be something that you're going through as well because a lot of, a lot of the ego death, a lot of the conditioning that we've been working on removing our, ourselves from, a lot of that has to do with you know, our willpower being shaped by our parents and society and our teachers and our professors and our mentors and everything. And a lot of that, a lot of the time, people, adults in power or people that are trying to help us grow, I guess, and to a certain extent, yes, they kind of take us and they reshape our willpower away from what the individual wants and more towards what the person, the in the position of authority feels it should be working towards feels we like feels like what we should be working towards and i feel like this this extended period of ego death and and changing our view and changing the way that we approach life and changing the way we show up in the world has a lot to do with recentering ourselves around what it is we actually want to use our willpower for rather than what it is we are told to use it for talk about rebellion. But okay, so that's what I'm seeing in the colors so far. Let's get into the cards and see what the cards have to say. Yes, here we go. So what's going on today? What do we want to talk about this morning or in this session? Yeah. 
Excellent. All right. Okay, I like this, you guys. At the bottom of the deck, well, I'm sorry, not the bottom, because we're using the vice versa deck, so there are two sides to the deck, right? But overall energy, we have the Eight of Wands. On the other side of the deck, we have the Eight of Swords, but it's the side of the Eight of Swords where you see that this person is not as tightly bound as she once believed herself to be. And the thing about the Eight of Swords is, you know, the Eight of Swords represents um, a mental prison and all that kind of stuff, right? But the thing about the Eight of Swords is that, yes, you may be tied up by a rope surrounded by eight swords, but those eight swords are sharp. And those swords could break you out of that rope if you really wanted to, right? You'll just have to go over there and physically get yourself out of it, like physically cut yourself out. The other thing that I want to point out is the eagle that's at the top of the card. And it seems, it feels like here, what's helping us break out of a prison or break out of some sort of confinement is a recognition of seeing things from a higher perspective. Okay, that's what the eagle represents, soaring high above and seeing things from a higher perspective. And that's ultimately creating, um, it's dislodging blockages for us. Yes, this is a, it's not easy, it's an extended thing, but we're working on that at the moment, yeah? Okay, continuing on, uh, what do we have on the table here? Well, we have, sorry guys, morning allergy flare. <laughs> we have the Six of Wands. However, the Six of Wands is in reverse. But then as it came out in reverse, and I was kind of like, um, okay, I guess that could work. But as I was picking it up, I just picked it up in a way that flipped it upright, and it turned this side of the card on. Um, so I think this is actually really where we are. This is the Six of Wands here. And I feel like the Six of Wands came out originally in reverse on like the better side of this card or at least the brighter side of this card because, well, at first what I was getting with the Six of Wands was, um, and now I just wanted to say the Six of Swords, interesting. But what I was getting originally with the Six of Wands in reverse is somewhat of a bittersweet victory or um, keeping up appearance or because the six of wands can represent victory recognition and renown but it also can represent you know trying to make it look like things are much better than they seem or in other words keeping up appearance here um, and I feel like this this is a victory for us especially when I talk about what else came out here this is a victory for us however it kind of feels like defeat. And that's why I feel like this side of the card is is a better representation of the energies here for us because it's dark and gloomy. It's a bloody scene. You know, people have, they, the guys have blood all over them. You know, they've been through a battle, but they've come out on top. And I do feel like we are coming out on top. And here's why. Even though it may not look th that way in the moment. And I was just, oh man, I, this is so perfect. Cause I was just talking to one of my very, very good friends about this this morning about how, you know, part of me kind of feels like things are failing, my business is failing, my channel is failing, this, that, and the third, because it, it, things aren't the same as they used to be when I started. Um, you know, uh, uh, with the channel here, I experienced two years of a certain trajectory, and now we're in year three, and it's just not the same as it used to be. And part of me, my ego, is saying, well, you're failing, might as well you know, kick the bucket because you're, you're, you're a lame ass piece of shit and that's not the case. But that's why it feels like, you know, this is a victory for us, but it doesn't necessarily look the way we want it to look. Maybe the way our egos want it to look, sure. But at the same time, it's that, it's that, it's coming from a sense of conditioning that we're feeling this way in a sense, because what's really happening here is what's helping us to break out of this confinement, out of this mental prison, what's helping us to, you know, free ourselves and open up the floodgates and open up the doorways and the pathways to stuff. It's us building our relationship with ourselves, the two of cups, the two of cups, and then to the world here. And on this side of the world, we see the back of the, of the woman that's within this wreath. And to me, this is talking about literally seeing ourselves through the portal into the next phase. But this next phase has everything to do with building and cultivating a much more loving and balanced relationship with ourselves. 
this so what this is feeling like here you guys is this is us coming to terms with the understanding that we can't we can't really rely too much on guidance from the external so like okay that may put people like me here in a precarious position because we're sitting here reading energies for you helping to guide people and that's great but ultimately I could read energies for you. I could do a personal reading for you until I'm blue in the face. But you're still going to have to take the steps that you are guided to take within. People like myself are really only here to bring you greater confirmation as to what it is you may already know within. And often that looks like clarity because you're so wrapped up in your, in your own thoughts that it's hard for you to decipher what it is you truly know until someone like I, like myself, comes into the situation separate from the situation. We read through the energies and we, are, and we give you what it is you basically already know. So in terms, please excuse the, skif, the sniffles. So in terms of what the, 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 the challenges that we're facing right now and the portal or the doorway or the movement into the next cycle that we're experiencing, it has everything to do with balancing and cultivating a greater relationship with ourselves. And ultimately, yes, it is a victory, but it does feel like a bloody battle, doesn't it? It, do, it literally does feel like we're fighting for We're fighting for ourselves. Wow. <laughs> I'm doing my best to keep the sniffles to a minimum. I mean, first of all, I understand that it's gross. But also, second of all, somebody mentioned in the comments yesterday <laughs> about how they're like, every time I sniffle, they're like, no, your body is saying get it out of there. And you're right. You're right. I know. But like, I can't necessarily pause every 30 seconds to blow my nose. Like at least, at least like let me get the message out and then I'll pause. <laughs> but I'm trying you guys, I'm sorry. All right, so let's continue here. Okay, we're gonna get one more shuffle from this deck to complete the message here. And then we'll get into some clarification. Yeah, so what's next spirit? What else do you wanna say to us about this situation? I did just notice this, but we're coming online here, all right? Um, Eight of Cups is at the bottom of the deck, and now we have the Eight of Wands on the other side of the, of the deck, all right? So lots of Eights, okay? Eight of Swords, Eight of Cups, Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands, I'm sorry, the Eight of Cups here is representing moving away from things that no longer serve us. I love that we on, on this side of the card, we have this... Uh, representation of the sun and the moon to me that's a representation of the masculine and the feminine energies within you it's the light and the dark within you and when i say dark i don't rep i don't necessarily mean evil okay just because something is dark doesn't mean it's necessarily evil or bad it's just the the polar opposite of the light okay um but here in this situation What's causing us to walk away from things that no longer serve us is the balancing and the harmonizing and the union of masculine and feminine energy within us. And I need to take my own advice here, really settling into the understanding of what that means for you and the subsequent direction that you would like to move in in your life because of this balance of between masculine and feminine energy is going to take time to learn about and to understand because again, we are working through centuries of conditioning within the humans within human society and it does feel like that affects us more than just what we've experienced in this current incarnation i feel like it's like the we're we're working on removing the weight of there it is again of centuries of conditioning centuries of social norms and all that stuff. We're, we're in the process of not only lifting that weight off of our shoulders, but lifting that weight off of the shoulders of humanity. And no, that's not our responsibility. Our own responsibility is to do that for ourselves. Because as we do that for ourselves and as we allow ourselves to be healed and our lives to be healed, and we, as we allow ourselves to move forward in this way, we ultimately help others do the same by leading by example. Okay. But 
Also, then we have this side of the Eight of Wands here. And this side of the Eight of Wands represents, kind of, to me, kind of represents a bit of a tower moment. Because it talks about making changes and getting moving on your path or taking the action that you know you're being guided to take or else the divine is going to come in and light a fire under your ass. That's basically what this lightning kind of represents and the Pegasus represents there. Yes. With that, we have the Knight of Wands that's come out. All right. So activation, light working. And then look, interestingly enough, on the other side of the Knight of Wands, you have a similar depiction with that lightning bolt. This to me isn't really feeling like you're being forced into anything. It doesn't necessarily feel like a traditional tower moment in the sense of you better get up, you better get your shit together or the divine is going to come in and the universe is going to come in and do it for you. I mean, I know I said that, but that's kind of what the card represents. But in this situation, that's not what it feels like. It more feels like the inspiration in terms of the lightning bolt that is a common theme between these two cards. Okay, and it's this inspiration that's causing us to wake up, that's causing us to go through this energy of recultivating and balancing and harmonizing this union of masculine and feminine with femininity within us. It's causing us to really work on stepping through that portal into a bright new day for ourselves. It's the inspiration that's causing us to wake up and be and get activated and be in this light working energy night of wands yes yes all right cool so let's now move towards some clarification first thing i want to talk about and clarify is the six of wands energy yeah so let's do that five shuffles one But that's literally what I did yesterday. Like I spent the day just cultivating the relationship, working on listening to myself, working on balancing and cultivating this relationship with myself on a deeper level. This is two. So what did that look like? That looked like me following my heart and my intuition. This is three. And going in the places that I wanted, that I felt guided to go, that I felt like I was asking myself, okay, what do I want to do? And I heard myself say, or I felt myself say, I want to go do this. And I was like, all right, fine, let's go do that. And there were number synchronicities throughout the whole day. I mean, and it, it was it was manifesting itself in terms of, uh, in ways of like seeing numbers on license plates. There was one there was one moment where I saw. 987 on a license plate and I thought that was cool and that was just one of many synchronicities that had happened up until that point and then later on in that drive like maybe 10 minutes later I was behind that same car that said that had the 987 on the license plate and then in the next lane like two cars up there was another car that had 789 on the license plate so like I and I didn't really dive too deep into the real meaning of those numbers. I just took it as, okay, I'm in alignment. I'm doing what is in what, what is it within alignment with me. Not only because I've been seeing all these synchronicities, synchronicities consistently through my travels today, but that one specifically, 987 and then another car says 789. Like, what are the, answer, the, ch the chances? What are the odds of that, right? Okay. You get it. This is four. And this is five. Or oh, wait, actually, that was four because I think I was supposed to do three. Yeah. So this is five. Okay. And if it's six, oh well, we have an extra shuffle. <laughs> okay. We're going to start with the six of wands here. All right. Six of wands. Now, at the bottom of the deck so far, you do have the four of cups. So. Okay. All right. So it seems that there are some things that you're not wanting to participate in any longer. I get it. I'm there too, y'all. <laughs> um, but, and this is kind of why it doesn't look like a victory, but it is a victory. I, it's, it's not often that I'll look at this four of cups energy, this, um, uh, potentially missing of an opportunity or boredom, or maybe even a little bit of denial 
Um, it's very rare that I'll look at this card and say, yeah, this is leading to a victory, but it is. Why? Because ultimately you are getting, you are becoming greater in tune with what it is you truly want building this relationship with yourself, the two of cups. And so there are going to be periods where it's like, no, I really don't want to do that. I don't want anything to do with that. Actually, this is boring. This isn't, this isn't fulfilling. This is not what I want. But when you work on, instead of just allowing yourself to sit in that energy and reject everything, what, how this translates into a victory for yourself is by using that to your advantage and saying, okay, well, if this is not what I want, then what do I want? And then listening to yourself when you come up with answers and following through with that. I mean, it's a hard won battle. It doesn't look all that glamorous, but it's still a victory for yourself, right? All right. Six of wands then, please. Spirit, what can you tell us about the six of wands? Okay. Well, there's the Eight of Swords at the bottom of the deck. So literally, you guys, this victory is coming through in terms of breaking us free, mentally, somehow, from this mental prison. First card that came out here is the Five of Pentacles. With that, you have the Empress, and then you have the Seven of Pentacles to the Hermit, okay? So first of all, what Spirit really wants you to understand is you are worthy and you are not alone, okay? Um... It's really weird, you guys, but these energies of being, feeling like left out in the cold, feeling not good enough, feeling a sense of lack is ultimately, is ultimately going to lead you in the right direction. I don't want to harp on this energy too much because basically the message here, especially with the Empress coming out, out of that, coming out after that, you don't have to worry. You are provided for, you are cared for, you are loved, you are abundant. You have access to abundance. Okay. But What's going to help you gain that access to abundance is reconnecting with yourself, letting go of the conditioning, letting go of the fears, letting go of the strife and the tomfoolery and the, all, and the bullshit and the fuckery and getting back down to sources energy within you because you are a physical embodiment of source energy, whether you want to call that God, whether you want to call that creator, source, the universe, whatever. You are an embodiment of it. So you have a God-given right to access that abundance. So this feels like spirit is coming through asking us to remind ourselves just how abundant and cared for we all are. Okay? Not to allow yourself to cut yourself off from that abundance any longer. And that has everything to do with the social conditioning from the past, Eight of Swords, Six of Cups, that we are working on building, rebuilding ourselves out of Three of Pentacles and rising above from, or rising, rising towards, I guess we should say, judgment to the Page of Pentacles. Starting a new reality, turning over a new leaf, entering into a new vibrational reality, which is going to require us to retrain our brains and figure out how to work in this reality rather than the old one. But of course, that is creating fear. But that's okay, all right? Don't let the fear stop you. Just keep moving, remembering, keeping in mind that you are loved, guided, supported, and abundant. Okay? And so what else has come out here? You have the Seven of Pentacles with the Hermit now. All right? So your victory... The, no, this is not glamorous. And this does not look the way, this does not look or feel victorious the way our egos may want it to be. I, I just heard the way our egos may require it to look for them to, for our egos to be satisfied, right? But your victory comes in weeding through the contrast, seven of pentacles to the hermit, weeding through the contrast to help gain a greater understanding and greater clarity about yourself and what it is you really truly want. Okay, and the reassurance that's coming through here is Spirit is saying you needed to go, we needed to go through these contrasting 
energies. We needed to experience something that was different to who we truly are. In, in some way, in some cases may have taken us away to a certain extent from who we truly are for us to rediscover that, for us to remember that. Because in remembering, in the rediscovering, then it has, it holds more value to us. And that's part of the reason why we're here on this earth, on this planet, to experience, to expand and to grow, to experience the contrast and then gain the, the nuggets of wisdom, as I say all the time, to then lead us further on our path towards expansion and greater self-expression. Okay, so then next, what I want to look at, actually, the last thing I kind of want to clarify here is the world. Yeah, so let's talk about what cycle we're entering into then. What can you tell us about this, please, Spirit? All right. At the bottom of the deck is the Five of Wands. Now look, Spirit is not going to tell us exactly what this cycle is that we're moving into because ultimately it's not going to look the same for everybody. It's going to be different for everyone. Um, so what they're giving us in terms of clarity right now is assistance and guidance into it towards, or in terms of how to continue moving forward so that we can continue to step through this cycle efficiently. What we have here is temperance and the Eight of Pentacles with the Five of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Overall energy of the Five of Wands is talking about the confusion, is talking about the inner battle, the inner conflict. It's talking about reconciling the differing of opinion and the ways that we have had to accept and assimilate other people's or people's of authority, their opinion, the way we had to assimilate towards that. We're literally reconciling all of that within ourselves right now and finding the balance. The true balance, the harmony, the union within us, temperance, okay? Re-alchemizing ourselves. Now, the thing about temperance is also we're needing to have patience because this is going, this is taking work. And what I heard from this when these cards came out was this is an extended cycle, an extended cycle of cleansing, healing, and gaining cl greater clarity. And this is not something that you can rush. Spirit is saying specifically, do not ask us for what, for the time frame here, because this time frame is going to be different for everybody. What in the time, well, first of all, time is an illusion. Time doesn't matter. That they're literally saying that right now. The timing does not matter of this because ultimately the timing is going to be perfect because the universe is orchestrating this for us, right? And the universe knows exactly where we're going and how we're going to get there or what we, what we need to get there. And that's going to be provided to us. But ultimately the timing, the amount of time that it takes or the time in which you get there does not matter. What matters is getting there. And for us to get there, we're going to have to go through the process of realchemization, no matter how long that may take. Okay? So just keep that in mind. But we are moving. We're, I literally see us slowly but surely almost inching our way through this doorway, through this pathway, through this portal. Okay? What do we want to do now? Oracle guidance. Okay. Excellent. Crystal Mandala, sure thing. Alrighty, kids. So let's close out this session here, this reading today. With Oracle guidance from our trusty Crystal Mandala deck. I have been using this, I have had this deck. This was one of the first decks that I started using on this channel and I still use it regularly. Five shuffles, one, two, three, four, and five. 
All right, y'all. Let's see what we've got. Closing Oracle guidance, please, Spirit. All righty. What do we have? We have card number 38. Oh, I love this card. Goddess Lakshmi and Dendrik Agate. Her golden grace. And 38 boils down to an 11, kids. Boop! <laughs> All right. We bring you the empowerment of her golden grace. Divine Mother Lakshmi, who brings blessings of enlightenment and prosperity, beauty and good fortune, smiles upon you now. Open your mind to the reality of divine generosity without limit. Open your heart to feel worthy of her love. When you allow her to grant you bounty, to bless you with her golden grace, she is empowered to shine her divine beauty in the world, to heal, uplift, inspire, and enchant the souls in need. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to read this first. The generous golden grace of the divine feminine has its own way of accomplishing its purpose to uplift, heal, and inspire the hearts of humanity. Where there is fear which prevents a soul from being open and allowing life to happen, the divine mother may respond by wrenching whatever is obstructing the flow of love out of the, ray, out of the way. If her fierce intervention is needed to ensure freedom for the soul, then this is what she expresses. Sometimes the harder path is what we truly feed, what will truly free a soul from needing to repeat a pattern. Sometimes, however, what the harder path does not accomplish for the soul is not particularly helpful. If a soul would become more enslaved in fear at the prospect of her fierceness or could benefit as much or more from a softer intervention, then the universal mother will employ a gentler method. If you are feeling as though there are limits in your life that you would like to transcend, perhaps in particular, any limits you feel regarding abundance, prosperity, and good fortune, and spiritual enlightenment, then you will be open to the message this oracle brings you now. The Golden Mother includes you in her plan to spread the beauty, the bounty of life throughout the world. As you receive from her, you will be empowered to share her vibrant grace with others. Open her, your heart to her golden smiling face and allow love's abundance to fill your world. If in your heart you have felt there are better times ahead, even though you may not have a particular reason for it other than a feeling in your heart, the oracle brings you confirmation. Even if you are yet to realize the touch of her golden grace in your life, you shall do so. The rising sun of her golden beauty shall shine upon you ushering in a time of love, prosperity, and peace. And I finished reading that at 3811. Look at that. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I look forward to seeing you tonight for morning coffee. Or for morning coffee. For happy hour. But if not, then I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee did I say morning coffee again? I meant happy hour, whatever. For our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>